Howdy guys and girls, I hope you're all having a fantastic day. So this is my Marshall Origin 20 amp and um, you may have seen my video about it where um, I kind of went through the good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah. <laughs> and I did reference that film because it's a super cool film which um, I used to enjoy watching. I haven't watched it for a long time. Anyways, this amp uh, it's it's kind of cool amp, but it did take some dialing in and I wanted to come on today and just give you five tips to make this sound really really good from just the stock amp and um, There's some things I've discovered about it, which have been quite fascinating. It's been fun to play I'm gonna modify the amp and make it into a really high gain amp and um, Change the tone and things like that but um, if you're just buying a stock Marshall Origin 20 or an Origin 50, maybe some of these tips will help you out. Also, Sasha over at SR Guitar has done a video showing three tips to get this sounding really cool as well. So go and check that out as well if you want some more tips. Tip number one, change the tubes. Now, uh, these three little tubes that I have in my hand are very, very expensive. They're all mullard tubes from the 50s and the 60s and they sound fantastic. I love mullard tubes. I use them in all of my amps. They do cost a little bit extra and they're used and they're from way back. They're like, these, these are probably like 60 or 70 years old, but they work really well and they sound absolutely incredible. Now the stock tubes that came in my Origin 20 were these, these are JJ ECC 83 tubes. They sound okay. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of JJ tubes just because of the tone. Um, they do provide plenty of gain, but they sound a little bit thin to my ears. In comparison, the Mullards, they sound really fat. They restore a lot of mid-range in my opinion. So it's worth um, changing out the tubes in, in the amp. Um, I changed out the tubes as soon as I got the amp. I did try out the amp, but then I reached for my stash, my private stash of mullard tubes which I've been collecting for a few years and they made it sound really really cool. The other thing you can do is change out the power tubes as well. These will make a difference as well, as well as providing power to the amplifier. They also change the tone a little bit. Um, I put a set of these Electro Harmonics um, EL34s in the amp, and they did improve the tone from the Marshall branded JJ tubes, which came stock with my amplifier. So, change the tubes. Alrighty, you see all these knobs? Ignore the labels. <laughs> Literally, they don't do what they're supposed to do. Well, not according to a standard amplifier, and certainly they don't do the same thing as my custom built 69 Plexi, which, you know, when I turn up the presence, it turns up the presence. When I turn up the treble, it affects the treble. When I do the mids, it adds this nice mid range to it. So you've got to be a little bit careful with how you use the controls on this amplifier. Um, I'm going to take you through uh, all of the controls in a second, but what I've discovered is that the presence control I kind of use as a treble control or one of the treble controls on the amplifier. The master, now this works in a slightly weird way because as soon as you turn it down to half you actually lose all of the overdrive. So my amp actually stays on full volume on the master all the time because I want that kind of that Marshall-esque tone, you know, the, the, the crunchy Marshall tone. And I only really get that between three quarters and full on. So be careful of how you use the master. Now you can get some really cool clean tones when you turn, a, turn the master down. So for clean tones, you can always use that. 
and I use it all the way up. The treble control is kind of curious as well because what it seems to do is add some high end but also it increases the gain. It acts like a second gain control and that's quite useful to kind of dial in plenty of overdrive if you want it as well. The mid control, uh, again this one doesn't really work the way I would expect a mid control to work. What it seems to do is add a lot of high end fizz when you turn it up but it does fatten up the tone when you turn it down. So I always have mine kind of dialed in maybe a quarter or something like that so it's at about nine o'clock. Usually I have the mids dialed in at about four o'clock or five o'clock. I have them really high on my amps but on this amp they're way down. Bass control completely useless. This literally is a chocolate fire guard in my opinion. <laughs> This just seems to add a ton of flub to the amp and I basically stopped using it. I've turned it off and I'll show you a clip in a second where you'll hear how it just introduces a lot of just booming low end to it and I don't find it very useful at all. I like the amp to sound a little bit tight so I just turn it completely off. The tilt control is actually quite useful because I use that as the balance between the treble and the, the bass. So when I turn this down it does make the amp sound a little bit bassier so I kind of use this as a semi bass control and uh, when you turn it up it does give you the the bite from the treble as well now this is supposed to emulate the two channels on a regular plexi basically the normal channel which is quite dark sounding and the high treble channel which is very very bright sounding so the tilt control is really useful use it for my bass gain control again another curious one because when the gain control is turned down to about here, which is just about um, on six or seven, all the gain just disappears. And then you turn it up a tiny bit and all of the gain reappears. <laughs> it's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to basically be a gain control which works from here all the way up. So it works in a very, very strange way. So again, you know, I go for high gain and crunchy tones, I just turn it all the way up. Now there is a boost control on a push-pull here as well on the gain control. I find it quite useful. I like using the boost control because it does add some more um, overdrive into the amplifier. But this works well only if the bass control is turned off. If you turn the bass control on with the boost on, it gets extremely flubby and the reason is probably because what Marshall have done is made the boost control uh, a boost via Xena diodes. Now as soon as you um, create a boost like that it does introduce some extra bass into the amplifier. So by all means use the boost control, it is helpful, it does give you a little bit of extra overdrive but turn the bass off. If you want more bass, you, if you want a thicker sound then turn the mids down and also turn the tilt down and there you go you'll be able to dial in some pretty cool tones.
Tip number three, the master volume. Now with the master volume, if you turn it down to maybe about 50%, 12 o'clock, you'd kind of expect it to lose a little bit of the overdrive, right? No, not on this amp. You completely lose the overdrive. <laughs> <laughs> so that crunchy Marshall thing just disappears. Now this is useful if you want to dial in a clean tone because you can dial in some really nice clean tones by turning the master down. And I got some really cool tones with my Strat when I did a full track when I did the, uh, the first video with this amplifier. <laughs> If you want a crunchy tone you really need to turn it up to three quarters or all the way up now this does present a little bit of a problem if you're playing at home because it gets really loud especially in high mode which I'm running it in at the moment I have it plugged into a load box and then the load box is going into my audio interface so if you want to get the most out of the amplifier then the master volume needs to live really really high now you can attenuate the volume down between mid and low as well. It does do a pretty decent job of taking some of the volume off, but it may still be too loud to play at home. So, kind of curious control. Another curious control on this amplifier. Tip number four is be careful which speakers or impulse responses you use with the amp because it does make a difference. Because the EQ is a little bit pernickety and very, very kind of strange sometimes, it really depends on what you plug it into as to what kind of tone you're gonna get. Now speakers do change the fundamental tone of an amplifier. It is probably about 60 or 70% of the overall tone that you hear. So you've always gotta be careful about which speakers you use anyway. Same with impulse responses, but this amp is a little bit more picky with regards to that. So be careful about which impulse responses. I'm going to show you a comparison between my personal um, signature impulse response pack, which is called Hero Cabs. I'm going to try some of the different impulse responses which are in that pack to show you what difference in tone you'll get from this amplifier by changing the impulse responses or plugging into different speakers. Alrighty, we're on to the final tip, tip number five. Get yourself a really good boost pedal. This is my Seriotone Centura pedal. This is basically a copy of a Klon pedal. I love this pedal. It sounds really, really awesome. Works really well with this amplifier because not only does it um, overdrive the amplifier a little bit more to give it a really silky smooth and beautiful lead tone, but it also fattens up the overall tone as well. Gives it much, much more weight. and Clon pedals are basically known for doing that. The other pedals you can use are things like Tube Screamers or variations from Tube Screamers, and a Boss SD1 or something like that. Whatever you like the sound of, even a TC Electronic Spark Boost, that's a really, really awesome pedal as well. So use one of these with the amp to get your lead tones and you will be a happy bunny. All 
Alrighty guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any tone tips about the Marshall Origin amps, please do leave them in the comment section below. I'm sure they'll be helpful to a lot of people who own these amplifiers. And it's a cool little amp. I'm gonna start modding it in a week or two and I'm really excited about that. So if you haven't done so already, please do hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification as well so you know when new videos are gonna be coming out because I'm gonna be bringing you a couple more videos with the Marshall Origin 20. And if you would like to support the channel, then you can do so by clicking the super thanks button or you can join channel membership right here on YouTube and get some exclusive videos and behind the scenes footage as well. Or you can head over to my merch store, pick up a t-shirt or impulse response back. My signature hero impulse responses are there as well. The ones that I used on this video with this amplifier and it sounded great, didn't they? Or you can head over to Patreon get some one-to-one -one time with me, music downloads, and even more exclusive videos as well. And it sure is appreciated. All right, you guys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you really soon with another video. See you later, bye. Go ahead, punk, make me play.